Hi guys, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to deal with the question of what is an inverse relation? Or given a particular relation, how do you calculate the inverse relation? Okay, so let's just keep in mind, uh, like the way we started off all the previous videos in this particular series, uh, that we usually define a relation to be, well we do define a relation to be simply a subset of a cross product. Or more importantly what we say is that a relation is built on a particular set. Okay, so here we have a set, A is equal to the set that contains the elements 2, 4, 7 and 9. Uh, what we've done here is we've gone through this particular technique here uh, to construct all the ordered pairs that are in A cross A. We've taken these ordered pairs and we've placed them inside a set. Uh, this set is the cross product of the set A with itself. So it's A cross A or the cross product or the Cartesian product. Uh, and we know by definition yeah, uh, that a relation, a relation is is a subset of a cross product of a cross product okay and that's all a relation is so let's choose a relation okay let's say r1 okay is equal to the set okay uh, that contains the set that contains uh, the values 2 2 let's say 7 4 let's say 9 2 and let's say one more, let's say 9, 7. Okay? So this is the relation R1. It contains four ordered pairs. Them ordered pairs have been selected from the cross product of A with A. So R is a relation on the set A. Okay? So this is the relation R. Uh, and what we know is, I suppose we could interpret these to be 2 is mapped to 2. 7 is mapped to 4, 9 is mapped to 2, 9 is mapped to 7. Okay? So the inverse relation, okay, the inverse relation, okay, let's call that R1 inverse, is simply the inverse mapping, yeah, okay, where we take the range values and we map them into the domain values. So in this situation, this ordered pair tells us that 2 is taken to 2. So the inverse would be that 2 is taken back to 2. So the relation or one inverse would contain 2, 2. Okay? The next ordered pair says that 7 is mapped into 4. So the inverse should take 4 back to 7. So it contains 4, 7. Okay? The next ordered pair in the relation or 1 is 9 is mapped into 2. So the inverse should take 2 back to 9. So 2 is taken back to 9. And then we have 9 is mapped into 7. So the inverse is 7 is mapped to 9. So 7 is mapped to 9. Okay. Yes, and that's how easy it is to calculate the inverse of a relation. You t simply take all the ordered pairs that are in the relation. Okay. And you flip them. Okay, where the domain values become range values and the range values become domain values. Okay. Where the domain values become range values and the range values become domain values. Okay. Uh, maybe one other relation just to keep an eye on is a special relation. Okay. Let's say we have R2 is equal to the relation that contains the ordered pairs. Mm. Well, it doesn't contain any ordered pairs, let's say. So it's the empty set. Okay? This is an unusual relation. It is a subset of the cross products because the empty set is a subset of all cross products. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to calculate the inverse of this particular relation. Let's say R2 inverse. Okay? And what we need to do is we need to take all the ordered pairs that are in here and we need to flip them. Okay? Well, there's no ordered pairs in there to flip. So, there's none to flip, so there'll be none in this set. So the inverse of the empty set is, is the empty set, okay? Okay guys, that was a, quite a short video uh, in relation to what is an inverse of a relation, okay? Uh, the next video will deal with what the inverse of a relation looks like from a digraph perspective. Okay guys, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland.